Tell me his name again. Thanos. He's a plague, Tony. He invades planets. He takes what he wants. He wipes out half the population. He sent Loki. The attack on New York. That's him. This is it. What's our timeline? No telling. He has the power in space stones. That already makes him the strongest creature in the whole universe. If he gets his hands on all six stones, Tony... He could destroy life on a scale hitherto undreamt of. Did you seriously just say hitherto undreamt of? You're seriously leaning on the cauldron of the cosmos? Is that what it is? <laughs> I'm going to allow that. If Thanos needs all six, why don't we just stick this one down the garbage disposal? Mm, no can do. We swore an oath to protect the Time Stone with our lives. And I swore off dairy, but then Ben and Jerry's named a flavor after me, so... Stark raving hazelnuts. Not bad. A bit chalky. One of the early decisions we made on Infinity War, we knew we wanted to go big. The storyline of Infinity War is big. The cast roster and character roster of Infinity War is big. The visual effects, the worlds we visit are big. The movie had to seem big. And Joe and Amph said, let's shoot in IMAX. And the question up to that point was, okay, well, which sequences? They said, no, the entire movie should be shot in IMAX. They're fantastic cameras. The chip is incredible. It's at a resolution that is unprecedented. So I think as filmmakers, it's an amazing tool for us, the way that it captures light, the way that it captures color. On the roof! In Civil War, we had a sequence that took place in an airport. And that really became a test scene for us for a couple of reasons. The first was we never had that many characters interacting with each other before in one sequence. It was also a test for those IMAX cameras to say, can we utilize the sheer enormity of this frame? And the answer quickly was yes. It was the success of that sequence with all the cast, with the IMAX cameras, and with Joe and Anthony Russo directing that really gave us the confidence to say, Let's even embark on Infinity War. Let's put more characters in it. Let's certainly have Joe and Anthony direct it. And let's use IMAX cameras for the whole thing. This <laughs> does put a smile on my face. I think if you were to look at the last 10 years as a, as a book, Avengers 3 and Avengers 4 are the final chapters of that book. There are some endings, uh, there's some new beginnings. That the, one of the great values of these movies is like nobody's ever seen something quite like them. The level of ambition in these films are pretty high, and we needed uh, equipment that could help us fulfill that ambition. In time, you will know what it's like to lose. To feel so desperately that you're right, yet to fail all the same. From day one on a production, when the cameras first start rolling, we think about the audience that is anticipating the experience that will be buying their tickets early, waiting online if they have to, reserving their seats, sitting in that theater, waiting for the lights to go down. And we just think about one thing and one thing only, delivering on that promise, delivering on that experience. And that's the immersive experience that IMAX gives you where you lose the rest of the theater, you don't see it, all you see is the image and allows you to be in that world. Because that's what we want. That's what we want the audience to experience is to be on that journey with us, with the characters in as full and rich and immersive a way as possible. And that's what IMAX does. I hope they remember you. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. Happy Infinity War week. So we got some new footage of Hulk when he crash lands in the Sanctum, but also a really big heads up from Kevin Feige and the Russos that they shot the entire movie in IMAX cameras. So even if the first time you see the movie is just like in a regular format, I would recommend that you try to check it out in IMAX or Dolby Vision. Those are my two favorites. 3D isn't quite as important, but when you hear that they specifically designed the film with the IMAX format in mind, it just gives you like that extra information in the frame that kind of changes the context of some scenes. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I'm doing an Infinity Gauntlet giveaway that'll be going on for the rest of the year, pretty much on a weekly basis, because we have Avengers 4 coming up. All you have to do to enter that is be a subscriber and leave a comment on the video. The really cool thing about this whole clip is the number of Easter eggs that they work into this. They said that there was a lot of improvisation on set, so I wonder what else didn't make it into the final version of this scene. 
but you have Bruce Banner playing the part of Silver Surfer from comic book Infinity Gauntlet, crashing through the Sanctum and warning Doctor Strange that Thanos is coming. Now, Iron Man wasn't there in the comic book version of this scene just because he was still kind of a B-list character during the 90s. It wasn't until Robert Downey Jr. came on and sort of reinvigorated interest in the character that he became a really big deal in the comics. But you can kind of see how they use these character pairings to balance the humor and the drama because this is meant to be a really serious scene. Hulk is telling them Thanos already has two of the Infinity Stones, the power and the Space Stone. He's already the most powerful creature in the entire universe. So he leans on the cauldron of the cosmos and just starts stretching his legs like he's warming up for a fight. I don't think he realizes that Thanos' ship is about to come into orbit because, you know, after this scene, they all go outside and they see all this destruction. He doesn't know that that's coming. Him reacting to the cloak of levitation is hilarious because remember, he's a scientist. His entire life has been dedicated to that field of study. So the idea that magic exists is a small leap for him. I mean, he probably gets on board pretty quickly, but him just casually dismissing all these powerful magical artifacts just seems so funny. Can we throw it down the trash? No, you cannot destroy an infinity stone. And it turns out that there's a flavor of Ben and Jerry's made after Tony Stark, Stark raving hazelnuts, which Doctor Strange has tried. If you're not a big comic book reader, before Secret Wars happened a couple years ago, there was an event called Time Runs Out where the Beyonders basically said that we're going to destroy the multiverse because we're done with reality. This is an experiment of ours that we don't care about anymore. The Avengers on the main version of Earth, the 616 universe, realize what's going on. So the Illuminati form the Infinity Gauntlet again because they each possess one of the Infinity Stones. Captain America uses it to stop one of the other realities from destroying their Earth, but in the process of doing so, cracks one of the Infinity Stones. So as of right now, there's only a couple ways to destroy Infinity Stones. One, you could use the power of the Beyonders, which doesn't exist in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or you can use Infinity Stones in the Gauntlet from another reality. So something of equal or greater power, it's just that we haven't seen anything of greater power than the Infinity Gauntlet because that's the whole MacGuffin of these next two Avengers films. The Infinity Stones forming the Gauntlet, changing reality. There have been a lot of questions about them introducing cosmic concepts. As of me posting this video, I haven't seen the movie yet, so I can't tell you what other concepts that they introduced during the movie, but we can talk about that after everyone has a chance to see it next week. So here's what the Infinity War week schedule is going to be. Monday, I'm allowed to post like a very brief non-spoilery reaction to the film. Tuesday, I'm allowed to post my full non-spoilery review. Still no spoilers. Then after that, I'm cleared to do whatever, but I won't be posting my spoiler review till Friday. Easter eggs, post credit scene, all that kind of stuff won't post till the end of next week after I know that everybody's seen the movie. So when I post those videos next week, it should be pretty evident from the video title what it's about, whether or not it's a spoiler. Like I will say spoiler review in the title when I post my spoiler review. So no worries, there shouldn't be any confusion about what videos are non-spoilery and what videos are spoilery. There is a special ticket giveaway that I'm doing that I started in my Deadpool video. I'll link that at the end of this so you guys can learn about that if you don't know what's going on. But I'll name the winner for that when I post my Westworld episode one video later tonight. But click here for that Deadpool video and learn about that Infinity War ticket giveaway. And click here to get ready for Westworld tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.